Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad today with a DN5B, uh, an older model with the big mixed booster type, and uh, this is our Origami Titan mission. This is uh, a rocket-propelled glider of sorts that is going to hopefully give us a lot more information about the upper atmosphere of Titan and maybe even explore a couple of biomes or two during its time uh, in Atmo there. Uh, we just came out of time warp where our relative inclination with the moon is about where we want it, uh, so we'll get this launch underway. Throttle is set to full, SAS is on, ignition sequence start. Wait for all engines to spool. Good light. Random extra clamp here on the launch pad causing me a little bit of worry. Uh, and we're clear. Ooh, I don't know where that clamp came from or what it's doing there or why, but somebody's going to get a good talking to on the cleanup crew. So uh, initially this mission was slated to go up on a DN2 or some uh, mixed model variant uh, below between DN2 and DN5. Um, ultimately, we decided to abandon the aero capture part of the mission at Titan and go just uh, straight for propulsive capture. You'll see the changes that have been made to the design uh, once we get these fairings off, but uh, the added weight of propellant necessitated a larger lift vehicle, and I think that uh, we can actually make this happen uh, on the back of this DN5B. No, it is a little older, it's not the most efficient design, it's certainly outclassed by, in every way possible, by the DN6, and could probably use an update just because we could use something of its capacity without having to have the massive expense of a DN6. But for now, this is where we're at, and this is how we're working with it. So, uh, I'm going to start leaning into this gravity turn a little behind schedule and uh, trying to tune our inclination with the moon so that we can get a clear, direct transfer to Saturn, because I think we've got the, uh, the power to do it. And uh, I will see all of you in orbit. And now, in retrospect, I should have double-checked the tonnage of the complete package instead of just slapping a rocket underneath it, based on what I felt it looked like it should be able to do. But there'll be a, a whole lot more on that later I'm sure as will uh, some of the other glaring mistakes I've made with this build uh, as it turns out I'm really bad at building things on live streams I tend to uh, consistently make mistakes that I really I should know better than um, bringing up the fuel levels on these uh, mixed engine uh, DN5 boosters uh, again I keep forgetting that the one in the sub assemblies menu was not dialed in and uh, every time I think about having to go back and make the changes, I say, I will do this after this next step, and then promptly forget, or run out of time, and then forget, something along those lines. There's booster set up there, off and away. There was some unspent uh, fuel in there, uh, which leads me to conclude that the DN5 either needs to be overhauled or retired. Uh, it's been a great launch system. It's really good at what it does but it could be better if I had the time to optimize it. But also in retrospect, this probably should have gone up on a DN6, uh, a larger, much more capable vehicle. With the fairings off now, you can kind of see the origami glider on top of a large package of not only scientific equipment, but uh, fuel, including two drop tanks that may have needed to be expanded out to four, but it was really pushing the bounds of weight that would get off the pad. Uh, even for this DN5. Uh, we do have our comms equipment on an extendable boom to give the origami glider clearance to uh, get clear of its delivery method uh, once we actually get to Titan, should we ever actually get to Titan. And uh, if you have not noticed it as of yet, then maybe you will, that there is no avionics package on the top of this upper stage like there really should be. I think this is because I adapted the crew version of this uh, DN5 and not the cargo version which should have the uh, additional avionics cores up top instead of just a uh, space for a crewable thing uh, to go. There's stage sup and I will turn you over to old B. Well we're trying to run out of orbit and I just got the avionics warning and sure enough I forgot to uh, put the necessary cores on the top of our HG3 stage. 
Uh, this is going to get very interesting. Very interesting very quickly. We'll, uh, we'll see what we can't sort out here. Uh, I'm so stupid. The conundrum right now being is that I cannot adjust the pitch um, to properly round out our orbit, so we're uh, we're aiming just a, a bit high. Thankfully, we staged at a place where it's not going to be terrible, and the staging didn't offset us in such a manner that it's going to uh, throw this whole getting to orbit thing through a loop. So, lucky there, but it's uh, it's just not going to be anywhere near a circular orbit, and nor am I going to try for it. Anyway, yeah, uh, here's old me to finish out the burn. Shut down. 400 by 146. It's absolutely terrible, but it is what it is. So we're going to get rid of this and bring up our pork chop planner that we've not had out in quite a long time. And hopefully we can still salvage this mission. Eek. Seven and a half kilometers per second. Oh, and our ascent was way off. This really should have gone on a DN6. So we might be making a uh, replacement mission. It's in one hour. We can use Mechjeb to angle us at the node, and I'm hoping we can use staging to uh, get ourselves uh, to fire up that engine. That's why I shut it down. Electric charge is holding steady even at night. Let's... Go ahead and turn these back on so we can see our mass array of junk that we have left in orbit getting uh, ever increasing by the day. All right, five minutes out. Let's see if this works. Maneuver and go away. It's trying. Unstable, risky. I can't set throttle to full. I can activate the engine, but I can't throttle it. Oh, no. Like computer it is. Target node. Burn for five six five eight meters a second. Ah, throttle. Burn. Yes. Oh, flight computer. Now, if you could... Yeah. Flight computer boogie. And I, I'm not turning it off because this is our only shot. This is not off to a great start. <laughs> uh, hopefully it'll uh, hopefully it'll still work out. This little mission, uh, you know, maybe maybe not. I think we're gonna go build a backup, put it on a DN6, make sure we don't forget the avionics cores. In the meantime, we'll just enjoy this nice little wiggle. Ah, uh, I'm. Still in that screen. That was not good. Let's hold the H key and just dispense with that thruster fuel. Because why not? So, this turned into an exceptionally long burn, so I have sped it up um, almost as much as I could. We will run through the entirety of the HG3 stage uh, while leaving Flight Computer open because I don't know if closing it is going to affect things or not. Um, and as it burns out, we will turn our uh, AJ-10 on. We now have avionics. We'll be running through pretty much all of those uh, external 
drop tanks uh, before we will get rid of them and rely only on internal fuel. All right, well, before we make our new node to uh, adjust our approach, we're going to go ahead and deploy our comms array, throwing off our balance a whole lot. There we go. Uh, all the dishes on it are already active and should be giving us uh, plenty of clearance. And we'll also do a uh, comms check. See if there's any science to be gathered from this thing that we don't already have. Hopefully that'll also balance out our load just a bit. All right, reset. No, 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 no. Okay. We have, in fact, collected all of this science. That's pretty cool. I don't think we... Oh, that did deploy, didn't it? Yes, yes, it did. Transmit data? Okay. Whatever works for you there, homie. Yeah, and I think everything else is uh, on the glider itself. We are burning our CS fuel, so we're just going to turn that off right quick and get ourselves a node plotted. Now it's going to take way longer than a minute, so let's slide that out considerably. <laughs> right, so this again took way longer than it had any right to so i've sped it up for you and the basic of the plan is uh get to saturn a flyby of titan once should help us correct our inclination and then repeated flybys should help get us uh, someplace close to where we can assert ourselves into orbit it's a plan anyway and well there we have it that will be our uh flight path to intercept titan it might take us a little while we'll probably have to gravity assist uh here or there to uh, ease the fuel burden, but uh, I think we're at least going to get a solid encounter. And uh, worst comes to worst, we'll just, uh, you know, cut some layers off the top of the atmosphere there uh, to get this whole dumb thing working. So in the choir complete, what does that do? So mission interruptions may compromise data integrity. Like radio data? Nope, oh, okay. Well... I'd like to, uh, I guess I can't retract it. Is that what's going on? Okay, I was going to stow some of these things. Toggle array. There we go. That's the one I would like to fold up. That thing is obnoxious. Oh well. We've got RTGs. We don't really need direct sunlight. Maybe we'll get some uh, solar sail effect going on in this thing. Help us get there. Uh with a little less burden. Anyway, so uh, that's our glider up top. Hopefully we'll get him safely deployed into Titan's upper atmosphere, and maybe we'll cover a couple of biomes. It does have some fuel and some engines, so maybe it'll be able to stay on station for a while. Oh yeah, there's this little tiny fuel tank right here that I should probably just uh, empty into this one, because why not? How cute. Anyway, all right. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.